Hi everyone. Every year, USCIS rejects thousands of cases because of mistakes that people make when they submit their application. Well, in this video, I'm going to go over five of the top mistakes that people make when submitting their applications to USCIS, which causes them to get rejected. I'm also going to go over some tips that you can do to help you avoid making these mistakes. So make sure to stick around. Hi everyone. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Michael Ashuri and I'm a U.S. immigration lawyer based in Los Angeles, California. At my law firm, we work with clients from all over the world and we regularly post videos to make sure that you're up to date with what's going on in immigration. So if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button now. So as I mentioned earlier in this video, I'm going to go over five of the top mistakes that people make that lead to their application getting rejected by USCIS. I'm also going to talk about some tips that you can do to help avoid making these mistakes. Now, as a quick overview, I want to talk about an important difference between denials and rejections. So those are actually two completely different things. When USCIS denies a case, it means that USCIS reviewed the case and basically decided that the person didn't satisfy the requirements for that particular immigration benefit. A denial actually comes after a review of the case. A rejection is much different than a denial. When USCIS rejects a case, they do not review the case to see whether or not you qualify. Basically, when USCIS rejects a case, it means that you filed something incorrectly, that there was some type of a mistake in your application. So rather than reviewing your case, USCIS will actually send your application back to you and they will not cash your filing fee check. Basically, it's almost as if you never filed your case in the first place. So now that we know the difference between a denial and a rejection, I'd like to go over five of the biggest mistakes that people make which lead to their case getting rejected. So mistake number one is filing your application using an outdated immigration form. When you file an application with USCIS, you usually have to include a USCIS form with your application. Well, USCIS regularly updates these forms and changes these forms. If you file your application using an old form, a form that is now outdated, basically, if you file your immigration application with a USCIS form that is now expired, where a new form is now being used, then USCIS will reject your application. So what should you do? Before filing your application, make sure to log on to the USCIS website. Go to the specific form that you plan to file and make sure that you're using the most up-to-date version of that form. Mistake number two is including the wrong filing fee with your application. So when you file an application for immigration benefits with USCIS, you usually have to include a filing fee with your application. The filing fee is how USCIS basically funds its operation. Well, filing fees regularly get changed. There are often increases to certain filing fees for different applications. So if you include the wrong filing fee with your application, USCIS will reject your case. So how do you avoid sending the wrong filing fee? Log in to the USCIS website for the particular form that you plan to submit and make sure that you're filing using the correct filing fee. Now I have two important points that I want to share with you. One is that sometimes USCIS uses the same form for multiple different types of immigration benefits. For example, the form I-131 is used for applications for advanced parole, for applications for re-entry permits, and for applications for refugee travel documents. Now, these are three different types of immigration benefits and they each come with different filing fees. So you wanna make sure to submit the correct filing fee for the particular type of immigration benefit that you're applying for. The second important point that I wanna mention is that in many cases, USCIS will charge a different fee depending on the age of the applicant that's applying for the immigration benefit. So again, you wanna make sure that you're submitting the correct fee 
based on the age of the applicant that's applying for the immigration benefit. Now again, the way to avoid these types of mistakes is to very carefully review the USCIS instructions for the particular form that you're submitting and the particular application type that you're submitting. Working with an experienced immigration lawyer can also tremendously help you avoid errors when submitting applications to USCIS. The third mistake that can lead to USCIS rejecting your application is submitting your application to the wrong mailing address. So for many types of immigration benefits, you're actually required to submit a physical application to a USCIS location. Well, in many cases, USCIS has a different address to submit your application depending on where you live. To make matters even more confusing, in many cases, USCIS has a different address to submit your application depending on which mail carrier you submit your application with. For example, an application submitted by FedEx may have a separate mailing address than an application that's submitted using the US Postal Service. So again, in order to avoid these mistakes, make sure to carefully read the instructions for the particular application type that you're submitting to USCIS to make sure that you're submitting the application to the correct address. The fourth mistake which can lead to USCIS rejecting a case is if someone leaves blank spaces on their immigration forms. So something that we've been seeing more and more of in recent years is that sometimes USCIS will reject a case if the applicant leaves blank spaces in the immigration form. Even in situations where the spaces that are left blank do not apply to the individual. So for example, we've seen some cases where somebody doesn't have a middle name and they leave the middle name section blank. And in some cases, those people have had their immigration case rejected based on that blank space. So again, this does not happen all the time, but to be on the safe side and to avoid having this happen to your case, it's best to write in NA in the immigration form rather than leaving a blank space. And last but not least, the fifth reason why USCIS can reject somebody's case is if they do not include every single page of the immigration form. So sometimes a USCIS form can be many pages. You have to make sure to include every single one of the pages of the form. If a single page is missing, USCIS can reject the entire application. So the best way to avoid making this mistake is to make sure to flip through every single page to make sure that every single page is included. On many immigration forms, on the bottom right corner of the form, there's a page count. It'll say page one of 20, page two of 20, page three of 20. You wanna make sure to flip through every single page to make sure that each page is included. So there you have it. In this video, we discussed five of the top mistakes that people make when submitting their immigration applications, which can lead USCIS to reject their application. I hope you got a ton of value from this video. If you know anybody that could benefit from this information, make sure to share this video with them. At our law firm, we're all about empowering you with knowledge. So the more people that see this video that can benefit from this information, the better. If you like this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button so that YouTube knows to share this information with a wider audience. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Again, if you haven't yet done so, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more immigration videos, and I'll see you on the next video.